Hi, welcome to Paul's workshop. This is my fourth video for my V-drum sander. Uh, some people wanted a little more detail on its construction, so I'm going to get into a bit of that for you. Uh, the first thing that we had to do is I had to figure out the drum size. That is where it all starts. I decided I wanted an 18 inch long drum, 4 inches in diameter. So I needed it to be on a solid steel axle. I went down to my local uh, steel yard and they provided me with a 7 8 diameter steel rod. Um, shiny, it was a lot better than, than your standard metal. Uh, this was a nice shiny finished uh, a steel bar. Uh, since I wanted 18 inches long I figured I needed enough for the bearings plus to come through uh, the box and uh, put a, uh, a pulley on the end of it. So I just made up a figure of 24 inches. So I went down to my local steel yard and I picked up this nice shiny steel rod 24 inches long. As you can see the drum axle is 7 8 7 inch. The motor, the electric motor, which spins at 1725 RPM, which is what I found out to be the optimum speed for drum sanders. So that's what I, and they're very popular motors, um, 1725 RPM. You can see the axle size on the drum is quite a bit bigger than the axle on the motor. The motor actually comes with half inch uh, axle. It has a little coupler on it, uh, came with the motor, that brought it up to 5 8 7 inch. So I needed two pulleys, one that fitted on the 5 8 inch motor and one that fit on the 7 8 inch uh, axle for the drum. However, I wanted the outside of the pulleys to be the exact same size. If one was bigger than the other, the outside diameter, then it would change the speed of either the motor or the, uh, the, the drum. It would either spin faster or slower. I wanted it to spin at 1725, so I needed the pulleys to be the same size on the outside. It didn't matter what the size is as long as they're both the same. So at my local uh, uh, hardware store, I took in my 7 8 inch by 24 inch uh, axle and I started fitting uh, pulleys for them. I came up with these two pulleys. I believe they're 2 inch pulleys. Um, so as long as one fit on the motor and one fit on the axle, I was good. I also picked up a power uh, link belt. Um, that you can take links out and put them back in to make the, the sizes different because I had no idea of the distance I was going to have between the motor and the uh, and the drum, so I needed something that could uh, uh, could accommodate where, wherever that motor was. So I just went out. I bought three feet of this uh, power link belt, and uh, more than enough uh, for for my job. At the same time I was at the hardware store, I needed some bearings. These are called pillow block bearings. And um, the bearing spins inside a closed, uh, a closed uh, cover. Um, I just have it bolted down onto some plywood. And you can see that there's an Allen key hole. And uh, you just simply, uh, I think there's two of them. You can see the two of them here. And uh, uh, it's 7 eighths of an inch, of course, to accommodate the axle. And uh, so I picked up two of those, one for each end. So we have two bearings, one at each end, and followed by uh, the two pulleys, one on the far end of the barrel and uh, one on the motor. A lot of people ask me why did I put the motor at the front. You could have easily put it at the back, as a matter of fact most people do. Um, but I wanted it at the front uh, because I have limited space in my workshop. It's just a little room in my basement and when I put this thing away I have it tucked up against a wall and the motor just simply would have made it stick out a little farther than I wanted it to. So I have it at the front. But of course a lot of people said well now I've got this pulley spinning with a belt uh, and my hands are going near it. So what I did was I made this little plywood gizmo and it just simply slides right inside and goes up and locks in, screws right to the side and you can see that there is absolutely no way, even on the inside, that you can get anything caught in there. It is totally enclosed and, uh, and that's why I built it like that. And you just screw it onto the side and there's no reason. I took it off right now just to show you the pulleys and the belt but there's no reason to take it off at any other time. So it stays on full time. 
So everything is built around the drum. The drum is the size that you determine what size box is going to end up accommodating this thing. So the box does not have to be very big. It doesn't have to be very deep. All that's going to be in it is sawdust. So the motor itself, the height of the motor mount, is pretty well all that determines the size of the height of the box. So just basically what I did was I took my drum, I put it on the on the uh, bearings and I measured um, how high I need to go for my box, how uh, low the top of the box had to be in order to accommodate a three-quarter inch top. Everything here is three-quarters of an inch. Uh, the sides are just uh, one-quarter inch plywood just basically to keep uh, uh, block off any holes uh, for dust to come out. So uh, that's pretty well it. Um, to make the discs on my drum, on my drum, I use my um, circle cutting jig. This is three quarter inch MDF discs. There's 25 of them in here. I use that because uh, it was cheap and uh, easy to, to make. I cut out circle cutting on my uh, bandsaw circle cutting jig, which you could look up my other videos for that. I cut it out a little over oversized, about four and a quarter inches, because I knew I was going to sand them all down to final size later. And uh, you can see that on my other videos. I cut them all out. I glued them together, about four or five discs at a time, just using regular wood glue. And I think every fifth disc, I would put epoxy on the axle, and I would slide the fifth disc over it, just giving it every every about every five or six discs. Uh, that way, um, there's no way that the axle will spin and the drum won't. Uh, in hindsight, I don't think I needed to do that because when you got 25 wooden discs in there, um, it's it's tight. I really don't think that that axle could turn on its own without the discs turning. So, but I did it and uh, and I haven't had any problems. So uh, that's pretty well it. Two pillow blocks, two pulleys, a belt, a motor, an axle, and you can get any size you want. I tend to overkill. I like having a, a, a big, bulky, thick axle that I know isn't going to move on me. I could have just as easily gone with a half-inch axle, but it, it, it would have bent and it would have moved on me. And when you're trying to uh, do hardboard uh, end grain cutting uh, cutting boards, um, you know you wanted this thing to be steady. So uh, that's what I did. Hope you enjoy it. If you have any more questions, uh, let me know. Thank you.